Ah, meron na tayong Meta 1. Hindi na tayo nagbimeta 2. Kung maga parang yung movie na meron before sunrise, before sunset, after sunset. Alam yung movie kay Ethan Hawke ba yan? Ay, gusto nga gusto ko yan. Yung chismisan lang sila on the train, going to Vienna, and then yung isa sa Paris, and then meron silang isa pang version, ng third version nila, na sa Greece yata, Santorini sila, etc. No? So, kamusta kay John, guys? Nireset ko tong... Um, Nireset ko tong meta ko. Ayan, sana medyo makita na natin yung mga comments nyo. Ayan, kamusta kayo dyan guys? Kamusta kayo dyan? Okay, medyo pag-usapan po natin na. Ayan na, nag-multi-platform na tayo. Meron talagang vlogger style na po tayo ngayon. Nags- uh, tinitry natin on YouTube, Facebook. Kung meron ng kaya na sa Twitter, gawin din natin bago mag-take over si... Elon Musk. All right, Mahameta, how are you? What whatever camp you belong to, whether ka camping, whether ka uni team, ka GMRC, ka Isco, ka Pacman, ka Antman, lahat yan. This is where you're gonna get proper analysis na medyo may pa cute effect. All right, okay. <laughs> yan na hindi niya makuha sa ibang vloggers. Ibang vloggers parang mm, okay, okay na, mabait na ako, mabait na ako. Ayusin na natin yan. Ito ha, ito, 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 ito. So, kung nakita niyo guys, meron tayong two articles na lumabas today. Yung isa sa Philippine Daily Inquirer, yung aking column, uh, kung saan pinag-usapan po natin yung ano, yung ano, <laughs> yung Pink Tide 2.0 ng Latin America and what Lenny and the opposition can learn from that, including dyan yung Pink Movement. Yung isa pa po ay kakalabas lang sa Nikkei Asia. So, ito po yung par- parent company of Financial Times. So, it's now in Tokyo. So, this is a more an economics book. Uh, I sorry, economics column kung saan ina-argue ko how can Bombo Marcos get the economics right by getting the politics right. Because if there's one thing that we learned on the President Duterte is that even if you put the best technocrats there, kung bara-bara yung politika mo, kung maraming EJKs, kung kapalpakan yung managerial skills, etc., the economy will suffer. That's why in 2017, basis sa mga reports na meron tayo, up to 90% yung drops of foreign investments because of concerns with rule of law in the Philippines amid all these EJK reports. The other one is also to keep in mind nung nagkaroon ng pandemia, ayun, mayabang na sila ngayon, pero nung panahon ng pandemia, kasagsagan ng pandemia, Philippines was among the worst performing on earth, right? Especially in region. And our economic growth, actually, our contraction was almost 10%. So along with India, one of the worst in the world. And basis sa IMF data, Philippines is among the worst affected countries economically. So yes, my growth tayo ngayon, pero we're bouncing from a very low base. So hindi pa tayo nag-fully recover, guys. Alright, so wag kayo magpadala dun sa mga blogger, blogger, blah, blah na yan. Alright, so if you have bad politics, even if you got the best technocrats, May limitasyon pa rin mga yan, di ba? Parang sa filter yan, guys. Parang sa filter sa camera. May limitasyon pa ang filter. Um, okay, that sounded mean. But you get what I'm saying? Kung talagang warag yung tulog, antok na antok na hindi ka natulog, kahit anong filter ang gagawin mo, lalabas pa rin. Ako naman, wala naman ako insecurity. I mean, you can see my airbags, everything, no problem. Sige, go ahead. Kansyawan nyo ako. Alright? Okay. Now, so, before pumuntaan, pumuntaan ko yung issue ng Nikkei Asia, actually, I was hoping na hang, sana naman by now, guys, meron na tayong mga DFA secretary, meron na tayong DND secretary, meron na tayong Department of Health secretary, meron na tayong National Security Advisor, and dami pa mga key positions na natitira na, 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 na hindi pa naayos. Eh, ilan weeks na lang, guys? Two weeks na lang? Three weeks na lang? mag inaugurate na si Bongo Marcos. Anong petsa na? Anong petsa na? Okay, so I was hoping we'll have the foreign policy and DND portfolios clarified, including National Security Advisor, para uh, pag-usapan natin itong foreign policy ni Tatay Digong and how we can transition out of this. For people have read me, my books, my works, etc., hindi lang yung mga uh, alaskador ano natin dito online, you would know that I have a very nuanced stake. I think there are certain things that President Duterte got right, at least his administration, there are certain things they didn't get right. Uh, and therefore, siguro pwede pumasok si... Uh, Marcos dyan at ayusin yan, diba? So, yun yung, yun, yung, yun yung gusto natin pag-usapan ng mabuti, ng maayos. Okay, Miko ha, nakikita ko na yung comments ngayon. Sige, umayos ka, isa pang insulta. Ay, actually, you know what? I have a new rule. Isang insult, you're out. So, let me memorize your name. Miko Domingo. Alright, balikan kita mamaya. Black ka na, umayos ka. Alright? Bawal ang bastos dito sa atin. Alright? Gusto mo mag-troll, punta ka dun sa kabila yung mga ma-certify or hindi ma-certify bahala na kung sino ma-certify ni ano dyan alright wag, wag kayong umayos kayo dito nakikita ko na yung comments 
nag-reset na ako ng FB ko, wala kayong takas. Kitang-kita ko live, ha? Ulitin ko, ha? Anong pangalan mo ulit? Balikan kita, ha? <laughs> you don't mess with me. Alright. So actually, I was hoping to properly analyze itong foreign and defense policy portfolio and also national security advisor. Again, uh, I, uh, I've been told that uh, Clarita Carlos, my former professor, could be up for national security advisor if hindi niya makuha yung DFA secretary. I mean, my sense is talagang sa, para sa kanya yung DFA secretary. Dapat binigay na sa kanya by this time. So maybe national security advisor is really more likely. But you never know. I already knew that Trixie was nominate, uh, was one of the top candidates to be press secretary. Eventually, she also became that. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see saan tayo pupunta yan. Oh, mamaya na, hayaan nyo na yung Miko Domingo na yun. Fake naman yata yung account niya. At kung hindi fake, well, kasalanan mo. Bastos ka eh. Umayos ka dito. Alright? <laughs> Meta 1 to ha. Malakas pa yung kape ko ngayon kahit train 1 lang. Okay? You don't mess with me in my Meta 1. Medyo iba yung energy level dito. Medyo Meta 2, 3. Mas mabait na ako. Pero Meta 1 ha. Maaga pang araw. Ito yung before sunset natin. Umayos kayo ha. Umayos kayo. Alright. So, pag-usapan natin today, ah, before tayo pupunta sa mga iba't ibang issue, at saka yung mga tanong nyo, guys, in fairness, alam ko marami kayong tanong sa akin. Uh, so, balikan ko yung mga tanong nyo. Nako po. Nako po. Nako po. Marami tayong mga tanong dyan. Uh, <laughs> i-discuss po natin yan. One second. Ah. Let me first go to my key point and then I'll go to your questions. No? Uh, I think abot na tayo ng almost 1,000 questions since the other day. Alright? So, let's see what we can do. No, anyway... Ang point ko naman dito is if ikaw ang supporter ni Lenny or Pink Movement or whatever, I think this is a time na hindi lang... I mean, this is a time whereby the best way to move on for you is to think about what strategy you should adopt in the coming years para lumakas itong opposition or may pag-asa itong opposition. And kung ikaw ay supporters naman ng kabilang camp or mga ibang camp, guys... You want to have a strong opposition para naman tayo may matino tayong demokrasya. Hindi a destructive politics. Ha? Pero yung may balance naman kahit pa paano. Wala naman perfectong administration. So you need also some sort of alternative para hindi tayo stuck sa isa lang. In fact, may magandang comment yung isang kasama natin dito sabi niya. Ang plano ng mga... Ito yung sinasabi ko, this is the worst cancel culture. Worse than yung mga pa-woke na cancel culture is yung style na... Hindi ka lang agree sa kanila sa mga alamano style nila. So, sabi nila bias ka, sabi nila bayaran ka, sabi nila uh, ano ka. Alam yun mga ganun. That's also cancel. Uh, red tag ka pa. Walang iya. So, so anong gusto nyo mangyari? Magkaroon kayo yung sariling buong bansa, maging echo chamber nyo. Ng, ano, gets nyo? And that's not a democracy na guys. Yung Kim Jong-un style na yan. Mag North Korea na lang kayo or mag China na lang kayo kung yung gusto nyo mangyari. Democracy naman sana tayo, di ba? So, don't force your opinion on others. And just because may disagreement tayo, doesn't mean na, eh, bias ka, blah, blah, blah. Ka. Tapos magre-reklamo kayo na kinakancel culture kayo. Eh, kayo na nga napaka, ano, di ba? Ang babastos pa ng mga comments. Oh, an- andyan na ba si ano? Yung kinall out natin kanina? Walang iya. Umayos kayo, ha? Umayos kayo. Metawan to. Babalikan kita talaga. Okay. etong ano. Oh, ito, 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 ito. Alright. So, pag-usapan natin itong... This is my column today. So, pinost ko kanina. Pakicheck ulit. Tomorrow, hopefully, may mga clarity na tayo sa DND and DFA, etc. Pwede natin balikan. If not, pag-usapan natin Marcosnomics. Alright? So, I touched on that in a number of pieces, including yung piece ko today on Nikkei Asia. Please, guys, check na yan. Ay, yung Nikkei Asia pala, kasi may, ano yun, eh, may bayad yata yan. Pwede nyo i-check ng libre yan pag sa Google Chrome eh, or ibang browser yata. Or kung... Yung first nyo, libre lang yan. So, don't worry about the paywall. There's another strategy. Alam kong parang pwede mo ilagay sa Twitter tapos i-read mode mo. Anyway, basahin nyo yan, alright? May makita niya. I'm fair, di ba? Ang sinasabi ko naman dito is, I think Bomo Marcos can do well if he corrects some of the mistakes of Tatay Digong and then improves on that. And then at the same time, of course, also deal with some of the concerns with good governance potential under his administration. Okay? So, I'm being fair. Yung sinasabi na give a chance, I don't know what that means. But in my case... I give my unsolicited advice and hopefully na mabasa nila. And Nikkei Asia is one of the biggest publications on earth, right? So, sana naman, di ba? Chinecheck nung iba dyan. Now, anyway, okay, let's have some honest conversation here, guys, so before I go into yung mga question, answer, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Last month was really, really stressful, to be honest, ah. Hindi lang ako na-stress dun sa uh, grabbing schedule 7 a.m. to 5 a.m. the next day, tapos 11 a.m., then, you know, Hindi lang yun, or checking all the papers. But also in the fact that I realize there are a lot of people na hindi maka-move on dahil either in denial sila, either 
they're trying to blame others, they're trying to blame voters, they're just trying to blame disinformation. Medyo may pagka-toxic na yung situation. I mean, I completely understand. Grieving, frustration, I completely understand. You have all the right. But there's a, there's a healthier war, way of approaching these kinds of situations. And one of them is to have proper understanding, especially comparative understanding of politics. Para makikita mo na you're not alone in the world. At may, may mga iba dyan around the world who have been through the same situation and maybe they came out of it. May pagkaano to eh. Kumbaga, kumbaga parang self-help politics ang tawag ko dito. Ay, gusto ko yan. Parang, kumbaga, kung may self-help sa career, may self-help politics din. And one way to do that is pag-aralan mo yung mga similar countries na similar yung problema, similar yung social ills, similar yung mga crisis problema, pero they were still able to find or chart uh, their way out of the tunnel or, or see at least the light at the end of the tunnel. Kaya nga, ang sinabi ko dito sa column ko, Pink Tide 2.0. I'm not talking about Pink Movement. I'm talking about Latin America's Pink Tide 2.0 and what are the lessons for Lenny and the opposition. Uh, ang, ang argument ko talaga dito is, you know, one thing I found particularly frustrating was the torrent of denialism among opposition supporters who vaguely ba- blame it all on disinformation, if not directly the voters themselves. Many express their wish to even migrate while others dismiss the result as pure fraud. Okay, gets ko yung frustration. The good news though is that proper political understanding anchored in comparative analysis is not only therapeutic but also potentially transformative in terms of charting the way forward. And this is where gusto kong pag Latin America. To be honest, we have more in common with Latin America than Singapore or Malaysia or, or Thailand or for their state building uh, history, their culture, religious background is completely different from us. While kung tinignan mo ang, ang Latin American countries, a lot of them are so similar to the Philippines. And do not forget, the Philippines was ruled by Spain via Mexico for a very long time. Some of the words that we use actually, they come from Mexico. No? Nova España before. So we have a lot in common with them, especially the, if you look at the structure of our nation state, and if you look at the problems that we're facing, so these are the social ills that I'm talking about. At the same time, like Latin American countries, we have also tried to become more democratic countries, but we have failed on so many levels, and yet we share same lofty aspiration. Nonetheless, this is where the big difference comes in. Okay, let me, before I go to the big difference, let me talk about also the issue of disinformation. So marami nagsasabi na, eh, sila kasi wala silang disinformation, eh, tayo meron. Like, are you even researching? Nag-aaral ka ba? Kasi kung tinignan mo yung datos, sorry, sorry, okay, okay I don't want to be mean. Ito ah, tignan mo tong status, uh, ito ah. So kung tignan mo yung 2007, Ipsos Perils of Perception, alright? Ito yung survey ng mga bansa, base dun sa assessment that whether the average voter or adult has informed opinion on key political and social issues. Now, guess ano yung ranking ng Philippines in the world, base dito? Alright? Okay. Ano? Ano sa tingin mo? Okay. Ito, 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 ito. <laughs> Ayan tayo eh. So, kung titignan mo itong ranking na to, ang Pilipinas po, so, this is a survey of whether average adults in the country are well-informed about key political issues. So, ang tawag dyan is misperception index. Now, the number one country in the world in terms of informed yung mga voters and adults nila on key issues is, you can guess, these are the usual suspects. Sweden, Norway, Denmark. But the number four and uh, four is interesting. It's actually Espana, right? Which used to be a very third world style country under General Franco up until 70s, 80s. Mahirap ang Espana. But, Yes, nakaabol sila. And for some of you who have been to Spain, you'll know how progressive they are, you know, including their government right now. You know? And then you have uh, a whole uh, usual suspects. You know? Now, dun sa bottom, pinaka sa ilalim ng ano, ito yung mga bansa meron dyan. Mexico, so in order, Mexico, Colombia, Indonesia, India, Peru, Philippines, Brazil, South Africa. Ito po yung lahat ng mga kulelat na bansa kung saan meron yung tinatawag na you should know this psychological term. What do you call it when someone, oh, classroom, what do you call it when someone is very confident about an issue, but actually, he's very ignorant din siya about that issue. Hmm? You know the term? Oh, 
Okay, I'm just trying to get... So, an uh, term dyan is Dunning-Kruger effect. Alright? Dunning-Kruger effect. Ano yung sabi niyan? Ito yung situation kung saan, the higher your certainty about that issue, this is also a situation where wala ka rin alam sa issue na yan, Right? So, it's a cognitive bias. Naalala niyo System 1, System 2, yung mga ina-analyze ko. So, Dunning-Kruger effect, which comes from the name of, you can guess, David Dunning and Justin Kruger in 1999. So, mga psychologists, so mga behavioral scientists. This is a situation whereby people with low ability sa isang task overestimate their ability. So much so that what happens here is that the lower the information, the higher confidence. So, for instance, tinanoy mo mga ordinary people, Ano sa tingin mo ang sitwasyon natin ng law and order? Yung mga pinaka-misinformed, yan ang pinaka-confident pinaka anong alam nila dun sa sitwasyon ng law and order. So for instance, akala nila ang Pilipinas ay narco-state na. Yung pala, hindi pala, pag tingnan mo yung data. Pero yung mga naiwala narco-state tayo, yan ang pinaka-mali. Uh, yan ang pinaka-hindi alam yung information. Habang yung mga iba na more skeptical and we're not very sure, they tended to be actually more better informed. So, ang tawag dyan, healthy or informed skepticism. So, Donner-Kruger, Donning-Kruger effect is a situation whereby the higher the ignorance, the higher the, cert uh, the certainty. Or rather, the lower the information level, the higher the certainty. Yung mga, ay, pag ganito tayo, ganin na mangyari. Pag, pag ganito, ah, alam nyo na sino yan, alam nyo na sino yan. Alright, yan. That's a classic case of cognitive bias of Dunning-Kruger effect. So, ang Pilipinas po is at the bottom of the list, along with countries like Brazil, Peru, Mexico, Colombia, India, Indonesia, and South Africa was actually the worst. So, so yon. So, obviously, where's this misperception coming from? It's coming from disinformation and misinformation. Misinformation is when people are spreading knowledge, but it's unverified knowledge. Disinformation, so ito, ah, there's also a difference between disinformation and misinformation. So disinformation, it's deliberate spreading of fake news, right? So in mi misinformation, it's like uh, feeling mo marami kang alam, nag Dunning kruger effect ka, share ka ng share yung pala, hindi accurate, hindi na double check. That's, that's Dunning kruger effect. Disinformation is, ayan na, uh, farm levels, mga ganon, alam nyo na this, alam na this, alright? So if you look at it, the countries whereby there was a higher, lower level of certainty but healthy skepticism scored higher. Sweden, Norway, Denmark. All of them Scandinavian country, all of them social democratic country in, in so many levels. Habang yung mga bansa na highly unequal, a lot of them Latin American, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Brazil, and then kasama din dyan yung Pilipinas along with Indonesia, India, and South Africa. Ito yung napakalaki yung problema sa Dunning-Kruger effect. No? So this is... A survey by Ipsos. So you can check yung mga follow-up studies na ginawa nila. I can send it to you guys para makita nyo yung nangyari. So this is a serious problem we have with cognitive bias. So clearly, we have issues with misperception, misinformation, disinformation. And Brazil is actually worse than the Philippines. Peru is almost at the same level as us. And yet, and yet, okay. You want to talk about basic education? Guess what? So let's look at another indicator to look at how Latin America is actually similar to us. So, for instance, there was one study. This is the yung study ng math and science literacy, di ba? Among uh, developing countries. Uh, 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 this was an OECD studies, all right? Okay. Pakita ko sa inyo. Peace. Kung, kung saan, up to 80 countries were assessed in terms of their basic literacy uh, ability to read, write, understand, uh, reading comprehension, at saka math and sciences. Now, nagkulelat ng Philippines totally dun sa isa, pero sa math and sciences, dun lang tayo din nagkulelat. Pero mas mataas tayo at least sa isang Latin American country. No? I think this was, if I'm not mistaken, was it Dominican Republic? Or El Salvador? Let me double check that. So, if you look at it, the, the, the problem of weak... Uh, Weak uh, basic education is actually common. So this is this the study, no? The PISA study, the Program for International Student Assessment, PISA, right? So it's a trine uh, So it's a survey of yung mga bata to assess yung basic education. Ang Pilipinas nagkulela talaga in the world 
But at least in one category, I think this was in math and sciences, may natalo tayo at yun pa, Latin American. Pero yung ibang uh, Asian countries, talagang talong talo tayo. I think Vietnam, na napakmahirap na bansa, nag-top 10 pa sila eh. Alright. Oh, so, yeah, ito to, Dominican Republic. So, it was only in one category na natalo natin yung ibang bansa, at least hindi super dead last. That was in mathematics and sciences, and natalo lang natin yung Dominican Republic, right? So, if you look at it, Asian... Western countries, all of them very, very highly ranked. And, and the, the ones at the top are the usuals. Korea, China, Vietnam, and then some of the countries. So, ito ah, grabe. So, I think survey ah. So, I think survey. I know you're not going to see it well, but I'm just trying to show you that everything we say is based on data. So, you see you see the rankings here? Yung pinaka-bottom dito, that's, that's Philippines and Dominican Republic. I think ranking sa math and sciences. Mas mababa tayo, pinaka mababa tayo. So, and then you look at the ranks of other countries, hindi lang Latin America. So here you see Panama, and then you see Brazil, Colombia. So if you look at it, a lot of Latin American, Uruguay, Mexico. So look at it, this is where all the Latin American countries are, at the lower level. Hindi sila nandito. Most Asian countries are here. Sin- guess sino makasama natin? Ito mga Latinos. Here at the bottom, right? So, if you want to use this issue of uh, uh, disinformation, education, etc., hello, itong mga Latino ka-level natin, no? Laki ng problema pagdating sa basic education, di ba? And this is fascinating. I think for the first time, sinama nilang Vietnam, nag-top 10 ng Vietnam, at, at least dun sa isang category. I think that was category of math and sciences. I mean, wow. And Vietnam is actually, this, Vietnam was poorer than the Philippines in per capita income when this survey was done. If I'm not missing, when is this, 2018? So last year lang yata na ano tayo ng Vietnam in per capita income. So, I mean, this tells you how serious the problem of basic education crisis in the Philippines is. And yung level natin, a lot of them are Latin American countries. So I'll show you that survey. Alright, everything I'll post, don't worry. So, kaya nga, hindi tayo nagmamarites tayo. Matinong pag-aaral pong ginagawa natin. Meron talaga tayong krisis pagdating sa ating education system. Alright? So, lo- so, top countries were, I mean, or uh, areas were Hong Kong, Macau, China, Korea, Japan, Chinese Taipei. Ayan. The usual suspects. Ang mga pinakamataas dito. Diba? Ibang klase. Yung Vietnam talaga, gra- grabe impressive talaga yung Vietnam. Eh. Yeah. Alright, oh yeah, the usual stuff, Japan, Korea, yeah. And then, of course, you more rich na Western countries. U.S., so-so lang in U.S. Actually, hindi ganun katuas ng U.S. Mas mataas pa yung mga ibang Asian countries and European countries. Alright, so here you can see the data. In fairness, Portugal, medyo mataas, no? They're dun sa upper quadrants na sila. So, again, so if you look at it, misinformation problem were very similar. Dun sa mga, uh, were very similar. Ano sinasabi mo dyan, Marcos Aquino? Obviously, fake yung account mo. Huwag kang mag-spread ng fake news dito. Ha? Huwag kang magwala-wala dito. Don't spread na... Don't post nonsense here. Okay, umalis ka dito. Pakiyan yan. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. You see, guys, we're talking about real studies here and data. If you don't have a capacity for understanding basic real studies at gusto mo lang mga bardagulan at kalakuan, umalis ka dito. We don't need you. Alright? Okay. So, I'll post that to you. So, what am I saying here? Based on data, it's very, very clear that the Philippines has more in common with Latin American countries in terms of misinformation, basic education crisis, than a lot of our neighbors. Vietnam, Korea, Taiwan, they're all top 10 in the world. The Philippines bottom, I mean, like, between rank 70 to 80. Do you know what I'm saying? Those are facts. I'm sorry to say. Not to mention our religious cultural background, our Hispanic colonial background, Goodness, mga ano natin, mga forefathers natin were writing in Spanish, Rizal among others, diba? So if you look at it, we have much more in common with these countries, also in terms of income inequality, uh, uh, Codillo politics, yung Tatay style politics, that's very Latino also, Codillo style. So yun. In short, I believe Latin American countries are more, of course, Latin America is very broad area, duh. But on an average Latin American country is much more similar to the Philippines than an average Asian country. Do you get what I'm saying? When you get average attributes in terms of rankings, attributes of state, industrial trade policy, much more similar tayo. Kaya don't be fooled by the fact na may mga Latino, iba yung itsura nila sa atin. Or maybe not me, I kind of can pass. No, no, I do pass. Uh, but wag tayo magpaloko dyan. Don't be fooled by face value, alright? You look at the attributes of their social, society, political economy, inequality levels, crisis. We can look at Gini coefficient with metrics inequality, etc. 
And yet, and yet, this is how you identify causality. If your causality is that disinformation, education is the reason why, blah, blah, blah. Why Latin America, despite having very similar problems like us, why, nonetheless, they elect a lot of progressive leftist leaders? Why? So that's the question what, that we have to study carefully, right? The, the names are very clear, so I'll, I'll go with the list, no? So in the past year, voters in both Peru, Pedro Castillo, and Chile, Gabriel Boric, voted for former activists who managed to defeat either the Scions, Keiko Fujimori, in the case of Peru, or partisans, Jose Antonio Cast, of former dictators, I mean, Cast in the case of Pinochet. More recently, Gustavo Petro, a former guerrilla fighter, Hey, no, Gilefa dominated the first round of presidential elections in Colombia with more than 40% of the votes, comfortably beating traditional politicians such as Federico Gutierrez, right? Oh, my Gutierrez sila, my Gutierrez din tayo. In Brazil, former President Luis Inacio Lula da Silva, a long-time labor uh, union leader, is a favorite to beat the incumbent foreign populist Jair Bolsonaro in elections later this year. Siyempre, cross finger iba. In the past, we had more radical versions, not necessarily fan of them, so, kaya nga sabi ko, Pink Tide 2.0, we had even more aggressive, uh, more uh, um, radical versions, a little bit too radical perhaps for my taste. But we're talking about people like, on the softer side, Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, AMLO, Bolivian President Evo Morales, Ecuadorian President Rafael Correa. So, we're talking, and then, of course, and then, super extreme na, alam niyo, Venezuela na yan, di ba? So, no, yun, ayaw natin ng ganyan. But if you look at the more recent ones, Pink, Pink Tide 2.0, they're, they're, they're progressive, but at the same time, not too radical. Uh, they are, and at the same time, a lot of them, former activists, former guerrilla fighter, etc., but a lot of them were able to also establish themselves successfully once they were elected into offices, whether mayor, senator, deputy, etc., etc., so clearly, guys, clearly, guys, there's, you cannot explain it all by just looking at disinformation and education. Because Latin Americans have very similar problems to us, and yet, and yet, their pinks are doing much better, right? So this is where the young pink movement in the Philippines, the todos, bibo, toddler, can learn something from the pink tide, kuya pink, ng mga Latino, right? So if you look at it, in fact, interestingly, uh, according to writer Anthony Ocampo, nasa America yun eh, tawag, mayroon siyang libro, tayo daw yung Latinos of Asia. Now, Benedict Anderson, one of the greatest political scientists ever, right, wrote that the Philippine Revolution was a continuation of the Bolivarian Revolts, this is not my quote, this is my writing, that rocked Spanish colonies in the mid-19th century. No? So, in fact, for Benedict Anderson, yung ating Katipunan Revolution was the last Latino anti-colonial revolt along with that of Cuba. Right? So we're really related to these countries. And Bonifacio would not have launched that revolution against Spain had it, not for, had it not been for Spain being bogged down in Cuba. So our history is very tied to Latin America. Anyone who ignores us, you don't know what you're talking about. Right? Mag-aral kayo dyan, right? So there are clearly lessons here for Lenny and the peak movement, etc. And let me discuss that very briefly. Right? So the lessons for liberal opposition in the Philippines are clear. May isang feeling dyan na sabi na jibber-jabber yung sinasabi ko. Ito yung mga abogado na walang alam sa social science, ang yabang-yabang magsalita. No offense sa mga ibang abogado. I'm just talking about yung mga iba dyan. You may be a decent abogado, but if you don't know anything about social science, wag ka na magsalita. Hindi ka nag-research. Pag-jibber-jabber ka bang nalaman. Mag-aaral pa muna kayo na mabuti. Alright. Okay, sorry Lord. Let me be mabait. Uh, hindi ito yung kabila. Doon sa kabila yan. Ito yung mga denialist na ayaw mag-move on, ayaw matuto sa buhay. Kaya they're dragging down the level of discussion. Hanggang Google Trends level na lang mga to. Alright, so clearly you cannot blame it all on just this information or blame the voters and all. That's very, very wrong. Que horror. You don't do that. Okay? Que horror. Senor, senora. This is how you do it. So in successful Latin American progressive leaders, first of all, they were able to rise through the ranks and establish themselves as credible, fiery, and transformative local government leaders and legislators. The, the person who comes to my mind the easiest is Vico, Vico Soto. Right? He's moving through the ranks. At the lower level, he's proving himself, and then he can move up. You can also look at the cases like Riza Hontiveros, right? Despite all odds, she became the only true opposition who won even in these elections. So after all the losses and all, still she was able to, to win, no? All right. Ayan na yung isa. Si Marcos Aquino. Ang source daw niya, Wikipedia. Wow! Ang galing mo, ha? <laughs> Balikan kita mamaya. 
Ah, wag kang magsalita ng ano diyan. Hindi ko mamaya ka na mag Wikipedia, mag mag-research ka ng mabuti. All right. <laughs> so crucially, Latin American progressive candidates embrace what? Okay guys, so keep this in mind. There's a term for this. I got this term from Chantal Mouffe. She's a Belgian French political scientist. She calls this agonistic democracy. What you need is in short, fuego. Palaban, fuego, and progressive, even a little bit radical kind of democrat, liberal, democratic uh, uh, campaign. So namely, a full commitment to challenge an oppressive social order through transformational policies. Hindi yung mga pahapyaw-hapyaw na reforma. Hindi yung mga half-baked, half-hearted liberal reforms. No, transformational policies. So for instance, if you look at the case of Pedro, he might win, he might not win, but he won the first round at least in, in Colombia. For instance, he's pushing for significant alignment, realignment of the budget of the country. He's an economist by training also, by the way, and also a senator. So in the case of Gustavo Pedro, sorry, Gustavo Pedro, he's pushing for radical reorientation of the country's budgetary priorities towards health and education. And he wants to increase the taxes significantly on the rich people and the riches of rich and then bring down yung taxes on the poorest people. That is transformational policy. Not yung mga pahapiyaw na pakiyot lang. Right? So this is what you call agonistic democratic struggle. And ang sinasabi ni Chantal Mof, I really like her argument is that kalaban mo populist, be also, a rad- be also a populist but a progressive populist. You cannot beat populist by pahapiyaw-hapiyaw na liberalism. You can only beat the far-right populist by being even mo- being a progressive and fiery, agonistic populist. You fight fire with fuego. That's how you do it. Yan ang sinasabi ni Chantal Mouffe. Alright? So please, pag-aralan niyan. And if you look at it, these are of course charismatic leaders who display true, true leadership by effectively mobilizing popular quote, passions toward promotion of democratic designs and kept democratic contestation alive by sustained and full-scale mobilization of the civil society beyond election cycles. Hindi pwede na mag-grand rallies and movement ka lang nung patapos na yung election. At hindi pwede mag-mobilize ka lang during election. This has to be sustained at a full scale before, during, and after elections. It has to be a long-term approach. So all of the successful politicians I talk about, hindi sila biglang naging progressive nung last two months ng elections. Hindi sila umasa sa mga artista na mag-endorse sa kanila or maglabasan ng mga volunteers nila in the last two months. No! They had movements behind them for 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 100 years, right? So these were sustained full-scale mobilization of the civil society beyond election cycles, not only for election cycles. And most importantly, so this is the closing part, none of them settled for half-hearted reforms or tired liberal cliches. Yung paulit-ulit na mga gasgas na narratives and music and whatever from the past that no longer is appealing to people, not only on TikTok, but even on more mainstream platforms. They succeeded because they offered nothing short of transformation reform in a broken political system. That is why, compadrino, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. That is why, even if Latin America has disinformation problems like us, I showed you the survey, the Ipsos survey, even uh, their educational system is very problematic like us, I showed you the PISA survey, still, the progressive candidates were able to be successful and to win. So clearly, may kulang, may kailangan ayusin. And kaya sabi ko, if the opposition wants to have a future, they have to study yung mga successful peers around the world. And hindi pwede yung pahapyaw-hapyaw na liberalismo or mga half-hearted reforms, etc. You have to go fuego. You have to go fuego. And that is why if you look at it, Vico Soto, Riza Ontiveros, these are among many people are closest to what we're looking at. As, as far as the successful models in Latin America are concerned. You cannot replicate it overnight, but you can learn some lessons, tweak things, and work on it for the next three years, four years, five years, ten years, whatever. All right? In short, in demo the 11th hour lahat. You have to be decisive. You have to be sustained in your approach. All right? Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat, guys. Okay. May mga tanong ba kayo dyan? Ayan na, marami na magalit sa akin, ha? Ayan, uy, medyo kumunti mga ano natin dyan, ha? Mga trolls natin dyan. All right, so we have to be really, really serious about this, guys. So, ito lang, ah, so this is the unsolicited advice. So today, I gave, I gave unsolicited advice to two camps. The Marcos camp on how to get the economics right, but I'll discuss that more tomorrow. And then also to the camp of the opposition, I gave an unsolicited advice on how they can reinvent themselves and move forward. 
kaysa mag-depress and all, there's a way forward. Wala tayong time to be depressed. These are really challenging times. We have to get things together. Alright? Okay, may mga tanong ba kayo dyan, guys? Ayan, mga friends natin dyan sa YouTube. Mga friends natin dyan sa TikTok. Mga friends natin dyan sa IG. Mga friends natin dyan sa LinkedIn. Mga friends natin dyan. <laughs> Nagpipiling na naman. Ayan na naman tayo. Ayan na naman tayo. Alright, ayan. Thank you very much. Okay, wait lang. Paano ko ma-check? How can I check? Oh, sorry sa mga, ano ah. Sorry sa mga YouTube friends. One second, let me check. Uh, tignan ko, mag-check ko ba to? Nakikita nyo ba ako? Naku po, nawala. Nawawala pala ako, no? Nakikita nyo ba ako? One second, ah. Kailangan ko i-check kasi yung mga tanong nyo sa akin. Let's answer one or two questions and then we can go and pahinga na. Kasi it's sunset time. Ayan na, magagalit na yung mga kabila. So, ano yung mga tanong nyo? Right? Guys, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Hindi marites, hindi bastusan, hindi... Well, Alaska door, I like to do that myself. So, maybe that's okay. But you have to do it based on data and analysis. And I'm gonna post the graphs and data there. Alright? And please, basahin nyo rin yung articles ko. Kaya kasi gusto lang nyo yung mga pocket bloggers. Magbasa kasi kayo. Mag-research kasi kayo. Kaya yung mga... Basahin nyo yung mga research ng mga cute bloggers. Alright? Yan na lang. <laughs> Ayan tayo. Sorry, Lord. Okay. Um... Yeah, so what, ano yung chichik ko yung mga tanong nyo pala? Let's try to answer a few questions before tayo magpahinga. Alright, looking forward pala si Bobby dun sa launching of Angat Buhay NGO. At yung sinabi na Bobby Gaviola, si Ernie Carpio. Anong concrete steps na uh, Lenny can do to strengthen the pink movement? I just told you. Probably the Lenny team should start doing fact-finding missions and go around the world, especially in these Latin American countries. Go to Colombia, go to Brazil, go to Peru, go to, I don't know, Chile, yung mga ganun, even Mexico. Learn something or two. Wag lang, ano lang, wag lang mga umasa lang sa mga ano, analytics dyan or mga American or whatever, yung mga old style na wala naman ano. Okay, alright? Okay. You can beat Cambridge Analytica if you know how to play the game. No Analytica can beat you. And overrated naman yung Cambridge Analytica. There's no evidence to just they were really that successful. Trump won because so many were tired of Clinton. As simple as that. Hindi na pwede yung Clintonite liberalism. Laos na yan. People want something new, something fresh, something different. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sabi naman ni Jerable Gray, is there anyone strong from the opposition is pursuing leading pink movement? Abangan. Yeah, that's, that's why I mentioned uh, uh, Vico, I mentioned uh, Risa, etc. But not necessarily pink movement, but something siguro... I mean, not necessarily pink movement that is just reliant on Lenny, but something much broader than that, right? More than, I mean, 15 million is a lot, but you can go even more than 15 million, right? Uh, lalo lalo na yung mga tao later on that inevitably they're gonna be disappointed ng wala na mga nutriban nila, tsaka yung mga talano, ano. Okay, ayoko na magsalita. Alright. Uh, ayan na naman tayo, eh. yung mga personal questions na naman dyan, ay walang hiya. Wala na. Nag-asawa na yung mga ex ko. May anak na sila. <laughs> Ayoko na magsagot. I, will, I feel old when I talk about love life. Kasi wala na. Mother na yung uh, asawa na. Ganun. Wala na. Zaddy na lang ako ngayon. Zaddy na. Whew! Next topic. <laughs> Ayan tayo pare. Okay. Uh, ito, may mga questions ba kayo dyan? Meron pa, meron pa akong mga 900 questions dyan sa mga ibang post. Ayan, pasensya na sa mga friends natin dyan sa YouTube. I had to sacrifice you for a few seconds. Sorry. Just to check you may mga kailangan. Cool lang kasi ano ako eh. I think I have to have another ano. May budget tayo. Bili pa ako ng isa pang phone screen dito. Sa lagay natin. Okay, okay. Ah, okay. Gets ko na. Sige. Ah, mag-isip ako ng paraan. Okay, don't worry guys. At least, masaya ako. Naayos natin ito. So nakikita ko na yung comments na ngayon. Marami salamat ha. Thank you very much guys. Alright. May tanong ba kay Jan? So, thank you again sa mga friends natin, uh, sumasali sa atin from around the world. California friends, are you awake? Are you there? I think it's just, what what time is it? 2 a.m.? 3 a.m. now? To our friends in Toronto, to, in Vancouver, in Europe, Gitnang Silangan. Oh, you love na love ni mga konyo style. Gitnang Silangan. Salangan. Thank you guys for watching my dad's vlogs. Yung mga ganun style. <laughs> Alam niyo na sino yan. Antman style. Uh, and uh, thank you din sa mga friends natin dyan from Cruz na Ligas. Yan. Mga friends natin dyan sa QZ. 
Yung makatabi natin dyan, yung matambay sa kanto. Minsan, minsan random people lang. Biglang, uy, kameta, ikaw pala yung vlogger, di ba? Uy, hindi ako yun, ha? Hindi ako yun, hindi ako yun. Hindi, ko, hindi, hindi ako yun. <laughs> ayan na, ayan na. Uy, hindi ako yun, ha? Pero pag mabait, ay, hindi ako yun, ako yun. Pag hindi mabait, ay, hindi ko, hindi, hindi ako yun. Si anong meta? Hindi ko, anong yung meta? Hindi ko alam yan. Yung ba yung company, Zuckerberg, yan. 